Yeah, so my name is um, Mainz Munyanyi. Um, I work for Ministry of Health and Child Care in Zimbabwe as the Deputy Director for Health Management Information Systems. So, yeah, we do have um, DHIS to, in the country, I think uh, the first time that we um, used it was sometime in uh, 2011. Um, it was um, DHIS 1.4 back then, yeah. Then um, coming towards um, 2012, we then adopted the DHIS uh, 2. And um, at this juncture, we, the idea was just to ensure that we have all the aggregate data in DHIS to, uh, unlike you know, the desktop-based uh, platform, we then had to adopt a web-based uh, platform. So uh, since that time to date, um, we have been implementing this solution and um, it has provided quite a number of um, solutions to a number of problems that we experience or we were experiencing as a country. Um, um, dating, I mean, or maybe looking at uh, particular aspects of um, uh, data for decision making, um, also uh, surveillance uh, tools. We look at the IDSR, um, having to um, collect data on a weekly basis has always been a challenge, and um, through DHIS, to, we are able to actually uh, track a health facility, um, you know, in terms of uh, its surveillance, uh, in terms of um, the number of um, 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 cases per condition that each facility has seen and um, we've even gone further to extend the DHIS to, to cover for our patient um, level data so it's more like um, we, um, we we used to have a desktop based solution to collect um, information on um, when we want to do the indicators like um, average length of stay uh, you also want to look at um, aspects in terms of the top 10 um, causes of admission, among other things. So we then had to adopt this uh, system so because we were able to actually use it, you know, using, using the ICD-10 coding system currently. So we, we do have uh, inpatient data, outpatient data, and it has worked very well for us. Um, just to maybe um, improve in terms of uh, what it can actually do, we have gone a step further to actually um, start um, collecting data for, you know, a campaign, campaigns like, for example, National Immunization Days, you look, look at the um, Mass Drug Administration, Vitamin A Supplementation, so we do have an instance that kept, captures data on um, these um, um, uh, campaign instances. Um, moreover, we have also looked at um, the aspect of uh, malaria control, where apart from just the aggregate data on um, the cases, you know, the tastes, among us other things, uh, and also, you know, the cases that we've admitted, there is also the aspect of um, uh, surveillance, where uh, as a country we're targeting um, malaria elimination, so we have since implemented um, a, a malaria tracker, which allows us to track clients who have been um, 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 identified to be, um, you know, malaria cases, and then we go to the to their homes and do the focus, um GIS mapping, among us other things. Um, we also have implemented uh, DHIS to in um, 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 EPI surveillance as well, you know, taking coordinates or information, contacts on um, a priority immunization diseases like EPI, um, AFP, among us other conditions, you know, adverse events are following immunization, among us other things. Um, yeah, so uh, probably in summary, I can say we've been utilizing this system and it has proved to be very instrumental as we um, try to address or solve a number of uh, health related cha challenges in relation to data. And of course, you know, when you talk of COVID-19, I think it's another critical area that we also need to talk about. Um, we have been um, implementing um, a, a COVID-19 registry. Um, this is specifically looking at um, all the clients that have been vaccinated. Uh, for COVID-19. Of course, uh, we are in the process of um, capturing the data, you know, as um, an after event, e-last. But of course, we, the idea is to ensure that we match 
these records with our um, 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 vaccination registries um, just to prove that someone has been fully vaccinated, partially vaccinated or not vaccinated at all. So yeah, it's, it's a process that we are currently uh, working towards and we just hope that um, we'll be able to match this with our, um, our national registry for vaccination so that we, when someone travels outside of the country, we are able to then verify, not necessarily using a QR code only, but referring to the actual database where these um, um, clients uh, have been captured in terms of you know, all the parameters pertaining to their vaccination. I think generally, yeah, this is um, how we've been working with um, DHIS2 and we hope to you know, include more um, aspects, particularly um, just maybe if I can touch a bit, uh, we have uh, been working with our TB, National TB Control Program to look at aspects of um, quality, um, data quality. So what we have done is we have developed um, a, a, an application or rather customized DHIS2 to, to look at um, data quality aspects where we will be um, visiting sites, um, doing the manual data verification exercise and then using DHIS to, to compare with the information that has already been reported. So if then we then come up with a score that then tells us if the data is of good quality or is of poor quality. If it's of poor quality then the team will actually then you know um, provide some kind of support to the teams that will be resident at that facility or within that district or within that province so that the data improved improves on, on its quality. So the subsequent support visit will then track on the previous score in terms of data quality and see if there's been any change in terms of um, improving the quality. Yeah, I think that's much from Zimbabwe in terms of DHIS2. Thank you very much.